Well, hello and welcome to all of our viewers from around the world. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. Well, welcome to all of you joining us. We are still talking to many of our presenters who are joining us here for our Gold Neonatal Online Conference this year. And I'm delighted to say that we have Dr. Nancy White, who is back with us here at Gold Neonatal. Now, we're going to be talking to Nancy in just a moment here, but I do want to let you know that uh, registration is open for our Gold Neonatal Conference, and you can head over to our website right now at goldneonatal.com, where you'll be uh, able to check in with all that's happening uh, for our live presentations, and of course, look at your time zones, etc. Um, I'll also let you know that Nancy's going to be speaking as part of our add-on packages here, and she's going to be talking about the NICU nutrition best practice for best outcomes. So. Um, and it's a huge topic. I know Nancy loved uh, sharing a little bit about it. You'll be able to listen to it as soon as the conference is open. But welcome back, Dr. Nancy White. It's so good to have you here at Gold again. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, Nancy, a few things have changed since we last spoke to you. I feel like we need a little catch up. But uh, for those folks uh, that haven't uh, didn't hear you last time, I mean, you've had a very extensive career. And so I would invite you just to share a little bit about, you know, um, well, first of all, of course, where you are in the world. I have to say one of my favorite <laughs> places. Um, and uh, many of you will be jealous, let me tell you. And uh, but just let people know um, wh what you're doing these days and um, and what your career, how your career has spanned over the years. Well, after 40 years of nights and weekends uh, and, you know, 24 to 36 hour shifts, um, I decided I try working part time when I hit my 70s and uh, uh, didn't like part time. I, I couldn't when I admitted a baby and I couldn't follow them all the way through their course. I just didn't like it. So I decided to stop in 2019 and um, doing clinical work. Of course, I've still been involved in um, research, in writing, in protocols, in the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine, in my local breastfeeding um, coalition, which I helped found back in 1994. Um, and um, somehow I keep busy. Uh, <laughs> and I've been doing a lot of traveling as well now that COVID is, is hopefully um, declining a bit. Uh, so I've been keeping very busy, but, um, you know, I, I still, I'm very fortunate in that, um, I still get Christmas cards from, uh, babies I took care of that are now in their thirties and mm. married and having kids of their own. And, uh, I still have a, a little boy who's now 10, who lives just down the street from me that I helped at 25 weeks take care of. And oh uh, so I still see him. And uh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to get the information about um, the babies that I had the privilege to help. Oh, what a blessing. And I mean, to have someone so cl close to home <laughs> in your neighborhood that and just and still, a, you know, a young little boy, really, he's just yes. he said, yeah, that's one. And he he actually is uh, beating his older sister at chess. Oh, wow. <laughs> so. <laughs> Those proud moments. Well, yeah. I know, I know, Nancy, you for many years, um, and, and I know this is a continuation for you. So just to be clear, I know you've stepped out of the clinical care. Um, but I know that you're volunteering lots, and you're doing so much, um, including, you know, I mean, speaking here, which is just wonderful. Um, you have stayed fully immersed, up to date, research based in the community, as I um, had the opportunity to listen to you today. And uh, what a wonderful presentation this is, I have to say so thank you so much um your extensive volunteer work though um i didn't i i don't want to skim over it because um you laid the foundation for so many of us you have been a mentor to so many of us what is the, your hope for the future as many folks are coming into this field um in you know in the nicu but also in the world of nicu and and feeding you know breastfeeding matters that type of thing tell me what is your hope for folks that they're going to be able to do to carry on the legacy well i think we are now we've we've gotten over the hump of 
breast milk in the NICU. When I first started, people, oh, no, no, formulas are better. They want more protein and, and they're much better. The babies grow faster. Well, faster, not better. Yeah, uh, and we found that out to our to our shame. And we now have nutrition on the forefront. It used to be, yes, we have to save a baby's life. So they have to be, we have to have a better ventilator. We have to have a better cardiac drug or whatever. We are now understanding how important nutrition is in the NICU to premature and sick babies in terms of their long-term outcome. And outcome is what we're keying in on. Mm. So I think we're over the hump that breast milk is now accepted as the base of everything. What we need are better fortifiers. We need a better um, ways of delivering uh, nutrition. Um, our, our TPN, especially the, the um, the fats have to get better so they're mm. not damaging livers of our babies. Um, and I think uh, we now have um, the younger generation of neonatologists. I had to fight. I had to fight hard to get human milk used in the NICU and donor milk. I was the first one in San Diego 25 years ago who got donor milk into, into the NICU for one baby at a time. And then we developed a, a donor milk depot so that we didn't have milk for all the NICUs who needed it and wanted it. So I think we've come a very long way, but we mm. still have lots of research that has to be done to see what the best way to do things is because the NICU is a very experimental place and we have done harm in the past. We don't wanna do that in the future. So I think we're over the hump for human milk, but we still have a long way to go to get everybody on board um, and, um, and to get um, not just the neonatologists, but all the pediatricians, all the obstetricians, all the perinatologists to recognize how important that human milk and breastfeeding is for our, all of our babies. Mm, absolutely. I, I, I just, and it, it's so inspiring to hear you. I know that we've, you know, you've come a long way. I've seen many changes over the years, which is, which is phenomenal. Um, but re there still needs to be a lot of research done. I heard you say really research. So we need to research, educate and give access. That's what I'm hearing you say right now. Exactly. So we need to really get some um, more high end research focused mm -hmm. in that area of, uh, you know, um, human milk and, um, you know, alternatives that are going to be safe for our babies long term. Um, we still need to educate. There's always going to be folks to educate. I feel Nancy, because, you know, everybody does come in from a different place, different standpoint. Some people don't have the passion, perhaps you and I would have, you know, but um, I think there'll always be a job for those who are willing to educate others mm -hmm. in this field, you know, and, and share the passion and then access. Let's talk about access to human milk for a little bit here, um, because this is something that you help set up in your area, but you know, that there are still many NICUs, let's just say globally, that don't have access um, to, you know, a plethora of human milk. I think there's a lot of recognition around the world that, that that's going to be really important. Um, there's lots of rudimentary types of things happening um, in countries where they don't have the infrastructure, perhaps, to design milk banks and have that type of thing. Tell me, what do you know? about the status of, you know, milk banks in the US? Are we still growing? Are we still yes. putting up more? What's happening? Well, with with the beginning of um, for-profit milk banking back, what, 20 years ago now, um, we have seen the value of human milk recognized. So mm. it is a product. Um, however, I much prefer nonprofit human milk right. banking because they guarantee that any baby who needs the milk is going to get it. Mm. And it, it's not a matter of, can you pay for it? Sure. A baby gets it if they have the supply. The problem is we have a huge supply of human milk out there. We just don't have an awareness of how to get it to the babies that need it and how to donate it. And I, I just recently I was talking to, I'm, I'm doing some lectures this summer um, uh, for uh, my local Blue Cross, uh, Blue mm -hmm. Shield um, people and their community outreach efforts. And uh, the, the person there didn't, didn't know 
that you could actually buy human milk for special uh, needs right. babies. Yeah. And, and she didn't, she, she had all this milk in her freezer. She didn't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. And she's, what should I do with this, Nancy? <laughs> I know what you can do with it. Donate it. You know, right. and you go through the, go through the enrollment process, make sure yeah. that you're safe. The milk is safe and donate your milk. So we have a lot of educating to do of the general public as to the importance of donor milk for both babies in the hospital and babies, special needs babies who need mm. it when they're at home, because there are yeah. a lot of those babies who do get outpatient milk um, from milk banks as well. So we have to make sure that human milk is processed and is safe and uh, quality um, and it, that people know it's available. So, yeah, absolutely. Especially, I mean, right now with the formula, um, uh, the lack of formula on the shelves, mm -hmm. um, people are going back to what I was fed I wasn't breastfed. I was fed um, uh, evaporated milk diluted oh, with yes. water and caro syrup. And I think the only thing that helped me was um, a tablespoon of cod liver oil every day, mm. followed by a Hershey's chocolate kiss. <laughs> I'm now a chocoholic, but I think it really <laughs> did help my brain a bit. So. My goodness. Yes, there's there's a lot of dire situations um, that have uh, come up in the last little while since February, actually, since it where the outbreak happened. Um, and it's now, of course, impacting uh, the general yeah. consumer, you know, um, of infant yeah. powdered formula, which is, um, you know, it is quite um, extraordinary, should we say, yes. um, you know, in um, in the US and in fact, in Canada as well. Yeah. Um, so I feel, you know, right across the board here, we've talked about, you know, in our NICUs, um, the research that's required, the awareness, um, the education, um, the access that we continue to need. And now you've just added some more to that level of general public. And I think, you know, I always talk about families and community, and you really need to be able to have folks that work on the ground level, um, you know, sharing and telling people about the importance of this and pointing out to them that we have access to blood banks and all these types of things. But perhaps, you know, we need to recognize again that our, you know, that our milk banks just really didn't come back, you know, um, the way that we had hoped they, because we did have more than what we do now, but mm -hmm. they didn't come back. And um, we need to continue to move that forward as well. It is still moving forward. I mean, I'm amazed. We have milk banks now starting up in China. We have milk banks in India. We have milk banks in Sri Lanka. We, we have milk banks that are developing everywhere. And you know, yes, there are problems. Um, yes, there are special circumstances, but we can overcome those. We can be sure that every baby who needs human milk gets it. It's out there. We just have to bring it in. Bring it in. That's right. Bring it in. Oh, I so appreciate your wise words and the fact that in you know many places that we didn't have milk banks that we now have them. Um, lastly, before I let you go today, um, I just want to talk briefly about your presentation. Um, it is jam packed. I have to say, Nancy, it's <laughs> Nancy, you're always, I say you're very, very generous, um, with your content in sharing and, um, you know, and it's, uh, you know, up to date and, and just so good. Um, and, and there's some great reminders in there of where we've come from and where we are today. So again, the NICU nutrition best practice for best outcomes. Um, what should we anticipate coming into this presentation with you, Nancy, um, for this conference? Well, listening to me talk quickly, <laughs> a lot of a lot of little asides um, <laughs> and uh, just thumbing through the last few. I, I want to make a point that that uh, the last few slides on quality improvement are indeed important. Mm. Look at them and look at the references because there's some very good resources for all NICUs. And it's important that we continuously try to improve what we do in the NICU, uh, especially when it comes to nutrition. So if you are an NICU nurse or NIC, a neonatologist, um, and you don't have an NICU dietitian, go out and steal one. <laughs> they're worth a, more, their weight in, more than their weight in gold. And Wonderful. so go find them. Go get an occupational therapist who will help you get babies to the breast before the bottle. Um, there are so many things that you can do. 
the most important caveat is though if you don't look at it if you don't measure it you're not going to be able to change it mm. so figure out how to measure it we were measuring um uh how fast we could get tpn well we had 24-hour pharmacists within an hour we had tpn for every single baby less than 1500 grams or any baby you wanted um mm. so we were very lucky we i live in a very affluent place i mean california san diego mm -hmm. yes we do have some places even in california that can't do that but the goal is to get every baby what every baby needs and um we can do it put our work our heads together put our work together put some money towards it we can do it that's wonderful well you heard it here first all the resources are going to be there for you folks and uh you're here in nancy's presentation that you need to measure it and record it um but more so thank you for your your generosity of really putting this presentation together and um, you'll see all those references uh, as part of this presentation as well. So it will be available to you in order to, uh, you know, make your NICU a better place for, for everybody. So thank you so much, Nancy, for your wonderful work. And of course, to all of you listening in, um, I know that you're all working so hard to, to um, you know, build better NICUs and, um, you know, create uh, wonderful memories for families. And I know that that starts with their, their diet and their nutrition, Nancy, that's what it, uh, what it comes down to. So thank you again for joining me here today. My pleasure. Thank you to all of you who have been listening in once again. Just a quick reminder, um, Nancy's presentation and of course all the others are going to be ready for you at the Gold Neonatal website, goldneonatal.com. You can register right now. You want to head over there because you want to see who else is going to be part of our conference. It opens up on May 31st with our opening keynote with Dr. Terry Moran and uh, you'll be able to listen into that for free, of course, so you'll be able to come in um, and be a part of this community here. Um, at Gold Neonatal. Thank you again to Dr. Nancy White for being with us here today. And of course, to all of you, our viewers. Bye-bye for now, everyone.